All right, so if you wanted to know how I did some of the things I did for the Skylander movie, or you're wondering what I actually changed, this video is going to kind of go over some of those things and also how the story evolved because there's actually multiple versions of this. And I spent maybe a month trying to get this as good as I possibly could. Obviously the biggest challenge is that I'm only working with what the developers made in terms of the dialogue of the characters and the cutscenes. I can't really change that, but I can do my best to edit it, rearrange it, and make a bit of a different story. It's just impossible to go completely on my own here and make up whatever I want. Um, maybe in the future, I wouldn't mind doing like a live action film, um, get some Skylander costumes. <laughs> Anyway, this is going to be more of an informal video. It's completely unscripted and uh, I'm going to just go through it as best I can. So obviously one of the bigger changes that you probably noticed straight away is this 4K anamorphic crop right here. So it's literally just an adjustment layer. It basically is what all the movies really use. I think it makes it look a lot more cinematic, but it's not just in terms of look. So if I just try to find it somewhere on this timeline here, I'll show you the entire timeline while we're here in Premiere Pro, and there's a bunch of After Effects stuff as well. The bars actually serve a really important purpose here of covering up this dialogue during these parts, which I kind of had to include, because otherwise, like, why is Glumshanks all of a sudden here at the Academy? The only thing is, like, I didn't want the text, because that's not, that's not cinematic, that's not a movie, that's just the game. So how exactly did we cover up the text with so little cropping going on here? You'll see that there's actually space at the top here, and this is getting cut off. That's basically because on this shot, we actually just repositioned it. You'll see in a lot of this movie, there's a lot of shot composition changing, going on and you'll probably never notice it so i know there's an example i, I made this like a while ago honestly but i know there's a good example around here ish pay attention to like how the black bars move and like you'll see you'll be able to notice it without the see how that kind of like moves up and so there's, there's like different things throughout this where like i have it moving up here um so you'll see like a bit more of that going on so there's all sorts of very subtle composition changes that may not really add much but because we have because this was designed for a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and we're basically turning that into cinema resolution like i had to do a bit of reframing to make sure all the important things were in the shot and also following conventions like rule of thirds if you're at all familiar with film it was actually really interesting going over all of the different cutscenes. you'll notice that they really stayed faithful to this rule um, i'll try to find an example for you like anything like this you'll see it all throughout the cutscenes, they like to use rule of thirds. So that was pretty cool to see. Like basically every single shot, there's some level of reframing, not this one actually. Here, little subtle things like that kind of help just to make it as good as possible. And while we're on the topic of making it as good as possible, um, all of these dark blue like layers here, let me just like highlight them for you guys in case you're not very familiar with Premiere Pro, which unless you guys are YouTubers, you probably aren't. But all of these layers right here are actually different LUTs. Uh, a LUT is basically like what they use in movies to give it like that look. So they'll take like the raw footage and then make it like a certain um, look that's developed with the director. So if we get rid of this here, you'll see like there's just little changes. So, like each of these layers is changing the look of the scene just a little bit. That one's very subtle. And then this one, so like most of the time you don't really notice much, but um, like an earlier version, which I might have to pull up, it's very noticeable. So let me try to find that. Okay, so this is actually the first draft of the movie. And this is obviously a scene that was completely cut out. And this is a good time to mention that in the description, I'm going to be including as an unlisted video, the first and second draft. So you can kind of see the progression of how things change. These are finished, the draft is a bit misleading. It's just not as, cut down um so this is like 28 minutes long ish i would say just maybe like skimming it if you want if you really want to see um but it's basically just rearrange stuff cut stuff out a couple other changes also a very big change but as you can see it makes a huge difference what i've done here um there's a couple other examples i'd also like to point out i think it's on this one after this right so here i'll just show you glorious isn't it but wait there's more because I've taken the opportunity to capture anyone in Skylands who could have even remotely, possibly helped you. Alright, so the original, it's totally different. Let me show you. Because I've taken the opportunity to capture anyone in Skylands who could have even Completely different. possibly helped you. 
Notice how this is completely dark. Whereas in here, like you can see Flynn, I actually took him out for this scene because I wanted it to be like, this is Eon getting locked up because Flynn isn't locked up in the movie. That's why this is recolored to be more like a blue tone and this like very orangey tone. I wanted it to have more continuity with this. So if I didn't use the this other clip of Eon, which is from the Count Moneybone section, then you would have heard, like you would have seen this part, which we don't want. We want it to just be Eon getting locked up. So I used this other part and I couldn't use the audio from it because it was like Count Moneybone talking. So I actually added in the glass sound effect with some like free sound effects online, which worked really well. But unfortunately this all got cut out because of one big, big issue. There's no real way to show Eon being freed from his prison because there's no like cutscene for it. It's just this giant money bone fight. So the best I would I was doing at the time was like Mags freeing him. Like this doesn't make sense because he's just in the academy and obviously Chaos would not put him in the academy. So because of the continuity, I can't do that, right? This is what I mean by I'm very limited with what I'm working with. If they had just given me like a couple seconds of a cutscene after the money bone fight, we could have had that but it just, there's no real way to convey it. So I, I can't use it, you know, that's the problem. And also you'll notice there is nothing with Moneybone whatsoever because Moneybone doesn't really have a role anymore without the Eon thing. And so he's just gone. And I think that's fine because we only had a 23 minute movie is the final version instead of like however many hours it takes you to play through the game. So kind of condensing it, you'll see it's very fast paced and condensed. And so getting rid of like all these side characters and stuff kind of helps. There's also so much stuff with like the vehicles and you getting like sent to Skyland through rifts and like all sorts of crap like that. So in the movie, you'll notice that when Eon's speaking, it goes to like the whole thingy here. And then after this, it actually cuts to him talking about the superchargers and blah, 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 which we do not care about. We don't want in the movie, right? So what I had to do, was instead of having it go from there to the superchargers thing, I basically took the audio and put it underneath this clip. The sky eater. Yes, yes, fear me. It's really good for like connecting the two, which I loved. Um, so stuff like that really helps as well. And the other thing is this scene here with the dialogue, I don't know if you guys really noticed, but it feels very unnatural because I didn't want to have the whole Eon thing with the superchargers, whatever. And I wanted to include this dialogue. I had to include this part because at the very end, he references it and it's a very cool throwback and it's great writing. Good job, Vicarious Visions. But the problem is all of that stuff comes at, like after the whole Eon thing. So I had to rearrange it the best I could. And there's a whole lot of changes made to this whole scene here. Um, all of this, totally different order, right? This is terrible. Right after that, it goes to the Flynn, like, oh, don't worry about that, right? Which kind of works, but like the way that they speak makes it a little awkward. Um, but like usually it's supposed to go to this, which comes after because we need Eon to be the very last part of this dialogue sequence in order to get to this part. So hopefully that made some sense. I'm sorry, it's very complicated. I had to do the best I could with it because this is the original recorded footage of Superchargers. I actually went through the entire game and recorded it and then made it into a movie. All right, so this is the dialogue. Let me show you the original. It's way different. Are you sure it's supposed to rip big holes in the sky like that? Nonsense, of course I'm sure. It's uh, not just the holes, sir. Some of the other trolls have been complaining. About me? What did they say? So like, there's this whole sequence here of Chaos talking about all the trolls and he ejects them. It's honestly not a bad scene. I kind of wanted to include it. Um, instead, we kind of combine this. Ridiculous glumshanks. So it kind of works because Chaos goes to sit on his chair and then it cuts to him sitting on his chair. So it kind of works. That one was pretty smooth, that cut. You're imagining things, glumshanks. Now get me money bone. <sighs> And then they go to the money bone scene. So that was also cut out from this. Very long dialogue exchange, which we don't need anymore. And then we just cut to this instead. So a lot got cut out from that in the interest of time. I don't like to waste your guys' time. I'm sure a lot of you have already seen the cutscenes, So I'm just trying to give it my own story of it. And so stuff like that was kind of required in order to get it down. But if you guys want to see a bit more of like an extended cut, that's why the drafts are there in the description. 
So that's the darkness laughing, because obviously if you've played superchargers, at the end, the darkness isn't defeated. He just comes out of like a rift thingy and then you have to defeat him again. Now, why wouldn't I include that? Well, you're literally just going through a portal a million, 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 million times over and over and over. And there's nothing good that comes from it. At the very end, you basically just like hit him and he just like dies. Like there's nothing to show and it's not cool. Like it's cool from a gameplay perspective, but it just doesn't really work as well when it comes to storytelling and writing a script. There's actually a lot of cases of that where stuff happens that's okay, that's good for gameplay, that's good for, you know, the series of Skylanders, but it doesn't really work when you try to adapt it into a movie. And that brings me to one of the most important changes I decided to make kind of last minute because it's not easy to do and I wasn't sure if it would come out very well. I wasn't sure I was able to do it, but I kind of just spent some time learning and was able to get it pretty good, I think. There was a bit of a slip up at one point, but basically, Glumshanks dies. We all know that, right? That's what happens. It's a very emotional moment. It's quite impactful, really. I thought that was gutsy of them to like kill off an actual character. Really good job, Vicarious Visions. Like I said, incredible storytelling with this movie, <laughs> the game, sorry. But in the real game, what happens is the cutscene ends and then Pandergast, if you know who that is from Superchargers, is basically like, Oh yeah, guys, I just happened to get Glumshanks. Uh, so he is now a prize. You have to go win this derby and he can be yours. So what happens is it's good because it gives the game another level to do. It lets you do this cool derby thing, which I think you kind of have to have in a racing game. The problem with it is it makes Glumshanks death kind of meaningless, not completely meaningless. He still sacrificed himself, but he didn't really sacrifice himself. You know what I mean? It's very, um, climatic. I think there's a good term. Okay. So bathos is a term in film where there's a very sudden change of like tone. It's like anticlimactic that surprises the reader and disrupts the thoughts and emotions. That's exactly what happens here, right? We get all these emotions. We kind of feel bad for Glumshanks, right? We're seeing chaos, you know, take advantage of him and gets fired. And then he ends up with us and then Buzz, which is a good guy is trying to get rid of him. So all that's very important to keep in the story. Oh wait, he's back. He's just back. You know, it just kind of sucks from a storytelling perspective. I don't know if you can really understand where I'm coming from there. He appears as like this little imaginary guy, which I think actually works well. It's, it's almost as if he's dead, right? But he's not in this in the real game. So what happens is um, in the original draft, before I decided to just totally get rid of him forcefully, um, this is what happens. So I did a little Pendergast transition, which I made myself. It's very short, but it gets the job done. It's like a commercial and it basically shows uh, Glumshanks in the cage. By a convenient rift storm, Chaos's number one apple polisher and personal manservant cannot be yours for the lower price of crushing all who stand before you. And then, like, I, I can't just show the derby, and then uh, it, it just wouldn't really work. And then the last thing I could show is this. But it just doesn't make sense to go from like, oh, here he is, now you have to race for him, and then we, we just want him. It doesn't make any sense. It's not simple to make that work. I tried stuff. It just, it felt off, is what I'm trying to say. Because, like I said, this is a game. This is not intended to be a movie. The cutscenes are just kind of bridging certain gaps of stuff. So that's why it's hard to try to make it as close to only cutscenes as possible. And you'll notice here, the very next scene, Glumshanks. And then later, Glumshanks, and he's quite present in this scene as well. I, don't believe so, Hugo. I was really trying to keep Glumshanks in. Like, he, he kind of tells them, like, how to get the Dark Rift engine and stuff. But once again, getting the Dark Rift engine, there's no good visual demonstration of getting it. You don't even see it until here, right? So I can't show getting the Rift engine if you don't even see the Rift engine, right? It doesn't really work. I wanted to keep him, but I was like, it's just better writing to not have him. And I wanted to kind of deviate from the story as much as I could. Like here we see Glumshanks. This was easy just to cut away from at the end. You see him here as well. So we instead we just cut to this part and he's here, right? Okay, so he's there. And then he's in the background here. And then he's right here. Look at him right here, right? He's all throughout this entire scene and he's in this little floaty bit. And also Glumshanks appears here. You might've noticed, it might've looked a little weird. But after this, this is what's supposed to happen, right? And this is what it actually is. It's really hard to get rid of Glumshanks here in terms of editing him out. And I'll show you how I edited him out in the other parts. Right there. It's like he takes up so much of the screen and he's moving so like quickly across the screen that it's almost impossible to do. Like I could try, but it would look very noticeably bad. So instead of what I did, I basically cropped in 
to the darkness and I'll show you that. So yeah, it looks a lot more weird because the composition is just kind of off to have them so far to the edge. And you can kind of see like all the positioning that I'm changing here um, with the position keyframes of like the X and Y positions of the shot. And it's not ideal, but like I said, to, in order to get rid of glum shanks, I had to do so much work. And it's honestly kind of a trade-off. Like it's not amazing, but I think from a narrative perspective, it had to be done. Glum shanks, you can kind of see that he's there. It's a bit darker. It doesn't quite look correct. You see there's a bit of warping going on there. Also, this was a total oversight by me, guys. I don't know if you noticed this, but you can kind of see his hand here. I didn't really notice that was still in the shot. I thought that the bars would cover it up, right? when I was doing the edits in After Effects. So I didn't realize that his hand was still there. That might've gave it away that Glumshanks was there. Also that this just doesn't look quite as clean because once again, Glumshanks takes up a pretty considerable amount of space here on the screen. But as he goes away, you'll see it really starts to smooth out. Um, and it basically becomes invisible for a bit. And then he's eventually he gets out of frame anyway, but it's pretty good at the end there. Um, and there's a couple other situations we had to take them out. I'll show you. So as you can see, I have a lot of removing Glumshanks files. Um, I'm not sure which one of these is the first one I need to check. As you can see, there is a bit of that warping I was talking about. You can see a lot easier now that's very zoomed in. This is a little easier because he's not moving. But here, for example, every frame, in order to get the best possible results, I try to get a pretty good mask of Glumshanks. And that basically tells the software, where do I put uh, fill over him? which is content to wear fill. So that's Glumshanks and that's him gone. Okay, so it does a pretty good job considering like how does it know what's gonna be in here? Well, it has to guess basically. That's why it looks a little scuffed, right? Um, but yeah, as, as you can see, I basically masked this whole guy out the entire time for every time he appears, which is why this was actually so much effort. <laughs> I don't know if I regret doing Glumshanks or not. It, it is what it is. It was pretty fun. I learned some new techniques in After Effects, so I'm okay with it. So that's him the entire time, and it does a really good job of getting rid of him in this scene, right? It depends on the scene, mostly. It's kind of difficult for some of these, and I'll show you an example of that. As Flynn talks here, Glumshanks kind of comes into frame, and it actually really starts to cover him up. Um, this is all included in the final thing. So this was kind of a significant one because he takes up a lot of space, and you can see there's a bit of warping. That, that gets cut off by the black bars, by the way, don't worry. Um, and then you'll see like these lines here. Yeah, that's just because of the lines around Glumstinks. And I'm trying to keep as much of it in as I can. I, I don't know, maybe I could have refined this one a little better. This was the scene that was really difficult. Not, not, not this one, this one right here, okay. You might have noticed this one because it just looks that bad. Glumshanks is taking up a bit of a, a bit of space. It's not like a crazy amount here, but the problem is that this background is so intricate and we have all these moving parts of the darkness like this and he's warping because of it. And because of this, how much the camera is moving and he's covering up different sections. And this background here with all these different lines really didn't play nicely with the software. As you can see, it really tried, it, it, it's really bad at the start here. It gets a little bit better. Um, the lines start to try to connect, but for a lot of it, they're not. Here, it's good. But that's partly because Glumshanks is over here now. So you can see this part's not very good. Uh, but like you kind of start to, you start to notice it less over here, right? Glumshanks once again, kind of messing up this part. So that was the biggest challenge of this probably, other than just not having like infinite control over what characters say, what the cutscenes are, how the camera moves, all that stuff that's very important for actually making film. Turn this core of light into the most awesome weapon ever. So someone, someone did notice uh, in my Discord server that it's another portal sound effect from Minecraft. I thought it worked pretty well here. It kind of just fades out very nicely into the actual sound. Um, so why am I doing this? Like, what's the thought behind this? Cause I don't just do this for no reason to look cool or whatever. Cause this went through a lot of different changes and I wasn't super happy with it for a while. There's a bit of warping going on. And the reason I'm doing this is because now the darkness gets eyes, right? And this is kind of him seeing what's going on um, with the heroes here, right? So we're kind of warping it into his warped perspective of the world. And obviously like the color kind of matches with him a bit too. Um, and why am I doing this? Well, he says 
the Skylanders are building a weapon with the core of light. It's like, okay, well, how do you know that? You've just been sitting here in Chaos's basement and doing nothing. Well, no, you can see. So that was never really explained, but it, it makes more sense like that. I don't know if you guys ever like understood why I did that. You probably didn't think much of it. You're just watching the movie. Okay, a lot of work went into making it so that this looked better because what happens is after the Glumshanks guy comes down, um, they cut back to the people in the, like the people before we saw like these guys and they talk about it and it's just all random crap I don't want. So what I did was I tried to make it so that it, it seamlessly, hopefully, uh, stays on Glumshanks. But you'll notice there's a bit of I just make this full screen right now. There's a bit of weird stuff going on right here, right? So what's really happening here? Well, we have a second layer, which is actually hiding some stuff. So what's really going on is we have a mask here. So it's basically just around Glumshanks and it's making it so that only Glumshanks is changing from the original here because we don't want the background to like move and look weird as well. So I try to make it as minimal change as possible. You can see the background does change though. Right, there's a bit of a cut there. Um, so I, I try to smooth out the movement of his hands and stuff um, with a morph cut right there so i'm just gonna like get rid of everything i made and you'll see the difference quickly right right it's just very like sudden and it, you can notice it instantly right but with all that in place it's a lot of a smoother transition and then he talks so it works well right that's great okay now, the other thing is you'll kind of see it here i think but whenever the text comes up so remember we have this black bar right when the text comes up it actually like pops up and then pops back down. Every time it pops up like this, um, it goes over the black bars and you'll see it a couple times. So what I had to do was I actually, it's just for one frame that it pops up. So I actually just cut that frame and then would slow down these clips by like half a percent in order to make it so that there's not just a frame of blackness otherwise. So that is how we're able to get rid of that. Like here, you don't see it at all. Obviously this blue thing still comes up, unfortunately. I can't really do anything about that, but um, that was trying to hide the text as much as possible. While we're on Photoshop, I'll quickly show you this little storyboard I put together, which was basically just like all the different scenes. I was trying to like, how can I rearrange these best to get it to flow and make sense? This is actually kind of hard to do. You'll see this little mountain here, which I, completely got rid of because I wanted to have the dread yacht. So yeah, instead of having it go to like this little blue sky, it kind of went to like this more dark, darker area. I think that the whole area is nicer that way. Yeah, it's kind of hard to show you how I blended these together. It's a lot of like erasing stuff. You can see here, it's a little bit rough with the blending. Not a huge fan there. Um, and then this part, this like bottom right sector was all um, filled in with content aware fill. If you know anything about Photoshop, it basically just guesses what should be there. Even this part here is content aware fill. I, I actually drew, hand drew this waterfall to continue it because otherwise it would just be sitting there. It would be weird. And then this dread yacht, I really want to show you guys, but it's just kind of hard to show some stuff here. Um, I put like a little bit of a, like a motion blur effect behind it. Motion blur is supposed to be like darker than the original thing. It's quite subtle though. But that's what the motion blur looks like. You, you will never notice it in the real thing, but you know, this is what I do. I spend way too long. Um, and then as you can see, without the motion blur, it looks a little bit more clear, which honestly still looks good, but I don't know. I just decided to, I think it looks more realistic like this. Also, like I said, the lights here, it's a bit more of a light over here to reflect all the brightness over there. Um, and then just other changes like this should be, this should be a little brighter. I mean, a little darker because it's the bottom. And then just some other like, like glow, like highlights. Um, on parts of this thing. And I was originally gonna try to get like a Skylanders movie in here, but it, it, I don't think it would have looked that great. I tried really hard to get the Academy letters off. Uh, it didn't look great either. And I tried other stuff, like I said, with the characters. I don't know if I still have it in this folder, but oh, oh I do. Look, I was gonna have like the darkness in the middle. I don't know, what do you guys think of that? You guys like that? No, probably not. But actually a lot went into that guy. Like with all these crystals here, I made glow, like the eyes glowing, lots of stuff, all gone. Never used. <laughs> a lot went into this, a lot got scrapped. That's why I invite you guys to look at what was meant to be in the first two drafts. I thank you very much for watching this. I don't know how long it's gonna be, but I've recorded this for like an hour. So hopefully it's not too long. After this, we're going back to very normal content. Also guys, join the Discord server if you haven't already. We talk a ton there. I'm extremely, I'm the most active person in the entire server. It's a really awesome community. I'm very proud of what you guys have done. Thank you so much for 1K. You guys are the very best I could ask for. And I really hope you enjoyed what I've been able to put together.